Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is another Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, I'm going to be doing a best in class video for champions that uh, affect turn meter. So I'm going to kind of focus this video in on the arena. However, all of these champions will do the same job in dungeons, uh, specifically strong for stuff like spider and finite. Also strong for wave control. So what I want to show you is... Uh, well, actually, the question I want to answer is, is Madame actually the best champion to go second in your arena team, or should you be considering different options? Um, so what I've done, I've built out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight options. Eight options of champions that all do this job really well. Uh, some epics, some legendaries. Uh, I want to show you the difference between their kind of different kit styles, what I look for in this style of champion, and... Um, show you some live action to see how it actually works so what do i look for then i look for um for my champion who's going to go second i'm looking at what do they do to the enemy that gives me the edge i'm looking at what is their base speed because their base speed dictates to me how easy it is to build their gear to get them to the right level um i'm looking at like do they need accuracy to do their kits and all of these actually do so that's that's a factor to bear in mind and I'm also looking at what do they do on auto. So if I want to run stuff on auto, arena runs, just press an auto. Do they do the job that I want them to do first time round? Or do they potentially cause me trouble? Um, now, all of these champions basically have the same build. They're all built in this, basically the same way. So I'll show you a couple that I've already built out. And I'll, I'll give you an idea. Uh, so I'm going to be running today Lissandra. Lissandra is here. So I actually need... So let me just talk to you for a, a bit first. My Arbiter is going to be my lead in all of these situations, okay? Arbiter has got 326 speed. So that's kind of like my base level of speed. Um, so I need to work out how fast everyone else that I try today needs to run to make sure they always go second. Make sure we don't get speed cut. Uh, and the way I did that was I used... Uh, the old calculator with Wistics built because I find this better if I'm trying to do things like effectively decrease the enemy's turn meter with some abilities as well. So the arena calculator, which I've shown other times before, is cool if everyone's just speeding up. If you're always speeding up, then that works really well. I prefer this one if I'm trying to decrease enemy speed as well. So this is what I've worked it through on. 326 base arbiter so my lissandra would have to run at 240 to never be cut she needs accuracy as well so i've gone for high accuracy enough speed that's it really that's all i care about on all of these builds everything else is kind of like secondary so damage stats all of that type of stuff totally secondary this is a strong build because i use her in other stuff but if we look at someone like gergo needs to be at 244 speed because his base is lower so he's harder to build but again, 244 accuracy. The rest of it is kind of a bonus. I'm going to show you a build from the ground up of how I build Shatterbones, who's going to be one of these champs, just so you get a feel for what I'm looking for. So basically, the, the core components are get to the speed that you need with as much accuracy as you can. Um, so my Shatterbones needs to be at 244 speed because he's got quite a low base speed. So what I generally look for first is a banner with accuracy and speed as a substat. Um, so I can pinch one from someone else, or I can just roll one up. So I can literally just roll this up to uh, level tw uh, level eight and see if I get a couple of rolls in speed. And if you don't have speed on your banner, it just means you need to find more speed in your gear. So already we've got up to 12 speed on this banner, which means this banner's already like top draw for this type of roll. Um, and obviously, the higher you push this up, if we push it up to 16, it's going to be a better piece. But we've got an 18 speed. That's actually awesome. 18 speed from a banner. So I can now pop that on him. Um, and it's going to make everything I do up the top way, way easier. Uh, good sets for this are speed sets, uh, perception sets, and accuracy sets. So I'm looking for speed boots. I'm looking for speed rolls on my other pieces of gear. I'm trying to get minimum 200 accuracy, but ideally as much as I can for the arena. If I'm just talking dungeons, 220, 230 is kind of like top end before I don't need any more. So the other thing I'll do is I'll look to see if there's any accuracy available in a substat on a amulet. Um, 
I don't really mind what the main stat is. If it's an offensive person, I'd probably go crit damage. If it's a defensive style of person, I'll probably go defense or HP. Um, but the main thing I'm looking for is high accuracy rolls. So that's quite a nice one there. And then what I'm looking for is either an accuracy chest or a defense chest in speed set or accuracy set or perception set if I had it. So we can take an accuracy one and substat of speed. So we've still got a lot of speed to gain. So we've got here an accuracy one with a little bit of speed. Uh, sorry, speed one with a little bit of speed on it with an accuracy chest. We've got a nice one here. Accuracy with 12 speed. So we'll take that. I'm just looking for defense or HP on the gloves. Uh, if Again, if it's someone who does damage, like Shatterbones could, then you might go crit rate on the gloves as well. But the main thing you're looking for is speed and accuracy substats together if you can get them. Um, if you cannot, then look to see what your accuracy level is like. Look to see what your speed is like. And then you make a decision. What are you lacking? Do you have enough accuracy already? If you do, great. Remove the accuracy requirement and just grab speed. So we try and get some speed out of these pieces. Not great there. Let's just look at speed set. So we've got an 11, which is going to be the best. So we just pick that one up. And then for these last two pieces, I basically want to try and complete these two sets. So I'm looking for speed and accuracy together, if I can get it. Got some here, five more speed. I'm going to be, what am I at now? 200, and I need to get to 244. So I'm going to be pretty short on speed if I use this one. Let's see what we've got on equipped. It might be that I need to remove an accuracy set and just go straight with speed sets. It's not right there. 16. Okay, that's much better. And the reason why I need such a high speed is that my arbiter is fast. Yeah, so you'll, you'll need to base this on your arbiter. You see what I've done here. So I've put the arbiter's speed in at the top, 326. And then everything else flows out from that, depending on what I'm doing with my abilities. Uh, and then we want to get to 244. So I need like 30 odd speed for the, when this goes on. Is that even possible? It is possible. That one there actually would do the job. That would do the job. Okay. And then really with the ring, it's any sort of damage mitigation or damage offense, depending on what you're doing with this champion. So if they're going to hit, um, use some offense. But more often than not, their abilities are all about um, just interacting with the enemy and, and forcing them to do something. So more often than not, you're actually not going to hit. You just want to stay quite tanky. In terms of masteries, again, these will all have a really similar mastery set. So generally, you want to boost your accuracy as much as you can. So these three are really important. If you've got someone who's dropping debuffs, you'll probably go for Arcane Celerity. Um, it's really important to get Law of Steel. It's really important to get Evil Eye. Um, and then depending on whether they've got 100% chance to land their debuffs or not, you either choose Sniper if they haven't, or you choose Master Hexter if they have. And then you want the big accuracy tree. Yeah, so this is kind of like a really standard sort of set that I run. And then depending whether they do damage or not, you either go offense or defense to go with it. So Shatterbones will do some damage. So we're going to go in um, and try and get a bit of damage off as well in some of his setup. Not all of his setup will do damage, but some of it does. Okay. So you can see here, pretty much everyone is running a very similar set of masteries to this. This is my one with offense masteries on it. And in terms of the defense mastery setup on my Cethalia, uh, no, not Cethalia, Elegaeus. Where are you? They look like this. So with Elegaeus, he's actually got a, a good ability to, or oh, he can't die basically so i give him selfless defender which means that he's going to take a ton of the damage from enemies when if, if we take a hit so if we take a hit he's actually really good at absorbing a ton of the damage from your team another good one for him would be bulwark bulwark would actually be a great mastery for him because he would take all like more damage more damage your team would because he can't die on his first hit so it actually becomes really good to soak up damage for that first AoE in case you're too slow. 
So in terms of what speeds do we need different people to run at to make this work, the reason why I wanted to show this, this kind of graphic is it, it enables you to realize why different champions might give you different benefits. So Madame, widely thought as, and, and I'm in that camp as well, as the best in this category, is actually way more difficult to get your damage dealers to do work unless you bring in another speed champion or somebody else to do the job that everyone else is doing here. So Madame by herself is actually not that effective at setting up your damage because you need your damage to be so fast. Um, whereas someone like Elegaeus and Cethalia start to give you a bit more of a benefit to slow down your damage dealers, which means you can push their damage stats up. So, uh, Shatterbones then comes in and actually does a great job here. Uh, this is on auto. If you put him on manual, uh, it's actually even better than this. Silar for an epic is actually awesome at doing this job. And then Lissandra is probably like best at, in class in terms of speed uh, or turn meter manipulate, uh, manipulation. Gergo and Umbral just do something completely different. So they freeze and provoke, which means that you actually just give yourself a ton more time. So using this type of info, I can kind of show you how this works. So let's take her out of the mix. So if we were going with Madame, uh, and actually my Madame is not quite built fast enough. So I've got a built, uh, it's the wrong one anyway. I've got her built to go alongside a Sifi setup as well. So I actually have my Madame built to only work if I've got two speed champions. So if you've got two speed champions, you therefore lose the edge in terms of the amount of damage you can put out potentially. So, you know, in this setup, I would have to run uh, Arbiter into someone like a High Cartoon to enable Madame to get her, her work done in time before we lose. So let me show you how this works. The reason why Madame is widely thought as, as the best, so I'd need to go double speed, is because she strips buffs, but she also puts decreased defense on. So when your damage dealer does eventually get his turn, actually he can he or she can actually destroy the enemy team. Absolutely like nuke them down and then that's job done. The challenge with Madame is that on auto, she doesn't do that all the time. She wants this shield. So oh, there's not even a shield there, but she's done her A2 instead of her A3. So if you want a team that runs an auto, Madame is actually the worst out of all of this group that I'm showing today. Uh, if you're happy to do manual, Madame's probably the best because she sets up your damage better. But what you can do, so if we was to take Madame out of the mix and just run with some of the other champions. So we'll start off with uh, Elegaeus, who's a champion that a lot of people just got. Elegaeus reduces turn meter by 20% on your enemy. He also removes buffs. So if we were looking at a team with definite buffs, uh, I wonder if there's a Chris team. Here you go. There's a lot of buffs going on here. Uh, they, yeah, it should be okay. So Elegaeus will come in and reduce their turn meter, but it'll also steal away or remove those buffs to enable your damage dealers to do some work. So with my Elegaeus, I need a 208 speed uh, nuke team. He's easily fast enough. Let me just see who else can jump in here. I think he might be able to. Yeah. So Elegaeus enables me to drop my, my speed and my damage dealers down to 208, which again is pretty useful. So on auto, he comes in. He actually came in and did his A2. So similar to Madame, I, I was, I, this is the first time I've seen him running that on auto. Similar to Madame, he is basically useless on auto because he's done the worst ability he could have done in that situation. This is what you want him to do. Drop those turn meters so that your damage dealers can come in and do work. So we're going to lose that fight or potentially would have lost it. If Elegaeus had done what I'd like him to do. Seems like so many times now we've got new champions with bad AIs. Um, so in this situation, what I want him to do is to come in and drop turn meter of everyone and take get rid of these buffs 
Buff's gone, turn meter drop, see that? So our damage dealers can come in and we've got loads of time to get our damage off now. Loads of time. And unfortunately, the AI is not set up to do that. So basically, he now goes to the bottom of the pile. Already he was close to the bottom of the pile because he, um, cause he, he requires your damage dealers to go faster than most. But he's absolutely bottom of the pile now because he's also rubbish in terms of his AI, which I didn't realize until that moment. So um, there you go. So he's now below Madame in terms of effectiveness. Okay, let's move to the next one down the list, which is going to be Sethalia. So Sethalia actually uh, has got the same requirements as Elegaeus in terms of speeds. Um, she would, if, if you're up against a team that's definitely got two buffs, then she massively reduces the speed you need your damage dealers to do. But I think there's a lot of uncertainty with that. Sethalia would be awesome um, if you're planning to go second and you're going to try and strip their buffs away. Uh, but that's quite a difficult plan to do because often if you go second, you're almost definitely setting yourself up to lose. Um, but you can see here, Sethalia running at 240, which means my nukers need to be 208. She has this ability here, uh, decrease the enemy turn meters and fill our turn meters at the same time. So we'll be dropping their turn meter bar and filling ours. And you see that it just enables our nukers to get their job done. Um, both of them. And he's running at 210, so she only needed 208 to get that done. So Sethalia actually does this job really well. Um, let's see if she does exactly the same thing on auto, which is quite a big requirement for what we're doing here. I think she does. Yeah, turn me into control. So on auto, she's perfectly great. So, so far for auto, she's probably the best one we've seen, actually. Uh, let's run Shatterbones next. Shatterbones coming in here. He allows your speeds to go down to 179. Uh, so we can actually bring in someone perhaps with a bit more damage built into his kit, uh, but slower because we don't need as much speed. Um, so the less speed you need, the more chance you've got of putting someone in something like attack percentage boots. On auto, he increases turn meter and drops their speed. Uh, his A2 is actually another turn meter control ability as well. So if the enemy somehow survives that first onslaught, he comes in So with his A2 here as his second ability and drops a ton of turn meter as well. Look at that. I actually wish he'd do his A2 first for a change. So it shows how um, some champions, like if I was designing this from the ground up, I would be making ch uh, changes here because that A2 is huge and it does damage. Uh, so if you're manual in, Shatterbones easily so far the best champion to use like out of those shatterbones for me is awesome 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 champion so shatterbones up there so far for me number one out of the ones we've tried let's throw silar in now with silar you can actually drop turn meter right down for sorry speed for your damage dealer right down so silar needs to be running at what 241 so i've actually got my silar in a stun set running at 242 um, and my damage dealer then, providing Silar gets a move away, needs to be 125. So slow. Like That means you can get attack percentage boots on. You can push your crit rate right up, your crit damage right up. So you can see here in this sort of setup. And, and she does this fully on auto as well. Look at this. Silar is just awesome for the arena. Look at that. Chunking down their turn meter. Now, unfortunately, Sathalia didn't do a big hit on her a1 doesn't really matter though i'm just kind of show you showing you the case but it just means you can drop your damage dealers right down right down in terms of the way they the speed they need and it means that you can definitely get more damage on your damage dealers so i'll, I'll run it with someone who's actually built to nuke and you can see this again um uh, yeah it doesn't matter which one so you know if, you, if i was bringing in say a cupidus who's got a ton of damage on him I was bringing in a Candrophon who's got a ton of damage on him. Uh, and you'll see here, these guys, 170-ish, 160-ish, I think, basically, we're slapping people so hard and we're running very slowly. So Silar, um, for me, is top, top tier for going next in your arena setup. Um, now, the queen of this, the absolute queen of doing this is Lissandra. So Lissandra in that spot, 
means you can run people literally at like 100 speed. I could bring in my Skull Crown, uh, like a Senacious Skull Crown sort of setup, or double Skull Crowns running at really slow speeds. Like this Skull Crown here is running at 107. And we should still get our abilities away because not only is she slowing down the enemy team, she's also speeding us up. So she's killing the enemy team's turn meter. She's increasing our turn meter and she's increasing our speed all with one ability. It's a huge ability, which makes her the absolute queen of turn meter control. So someone going second to enable your damage dealers, Lissandra's about as good as it gets. Um, and then I've got two others to show you, really, because they're a slightly different style of build. Um, so we've got Gergo to come in. Gergo does an AoE freeze. So again, you can have someone running very slow alongside him because actually what he does is completely locks out the enemy team on auto as well. So completely locks them out, goes in and does some damage. You've then got tons of time to get your damage away. Look how much time we've got. So Gergo... Again, like top, top draw, top tier for this because not only do, does he freeze them when they're frozen, clearly they can't attack you. Um, you know, and the other one which is a similar vein. So anyone who does AoE freeze, by the way, Shurimani, um, there's, there's a few, Luria, I think, is it Luria? I don't know, there's an Epic as well that does it. Um, but not to that effect. The other one which is kind of similar to this, which is an Epic and very strong, is Umbral. Um, let's grab her. Umbral. So Umbral does AoE Provoke. And she will stop the enemy doing what they want to do. Uh, the reason why I like Umbral for this. Is because she can't die when she does it. So on full auto. She will provoke. She only provoked two of them there. Which is weird. But you see the one, ones that are provoked. Doing it properly are coming straight into her. Which gives your damage dealer time to get going. And then your damage dealer lays the slam. Um, maybe she's not booked. 100%. Oh, sorry, she should be provoking 100% of the people if she's fully booked. Maybe I've not booked her out. Or maybe they resisted that I didn't see. But um, yeah, so Umbral or AoE Provoke is the same type of thing. It enables your damage dealer to get their damage off first. So for me, best in class then is Lissandra. Um, I think Lissandra and Gergo both do the same best in class type of role um but lissandra is much easier to build because her base speed is higher i then think actually shatterbones and sila come in as my kind of next tier of people shatterbones and sila are both really really awesome at this job um and if you're going to manual then madame comes in as the the best person to activate your damage but what i actually like to do is to run one person doing the kind of turn meter control, so someone like Gergo, followed by Madame, followed by your damage. So something like this, providing you've got enough damage to one shot, something like this then enables you to do a combination of everything we've seen today. So freeze them so you've got tons of time to get your hits off, take somebody out. You have to manual if you want to use Madame, uh, otherwise on auto she just does this stupid move. But even on auto, She's effective. Um, so yeah, but on manual, she's insane because you know, she will also be able to enable you to drop their defense, which enables your damage dealer just to hit so much harder. So we can activate the unkillable here. We can drop their defense and then we can slam. And that's how you set up your arena team. So guys, tons of information in that video. I'm hoping it was useful. It might be a little bit all over the place because it's a little bit all over the place in my head. But um, it kind of shows you the different opportunities you've got to make sure you stay ahead of the game in the arena. Um, I'll link the tool that I use below so that you can um, have access to that if you want to try and work out your own speeds that you need to run. I've been Hell Hades. I'll catch you later.